Hey everyone, very vague here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be taking you through how to create bucklers like these in Marvelous Designer, and how we can then attach these with straps, ready to integrate into a variety of different garment or accessory types. And just quickly, before we get started, I wanted to shout out all the support I've been getting from you guys on Instagram or YouTube. It's really appreciated, so yeah, feel free to keep sharing my videos and dropping likes, because it really helps me to grow this channel and create more content for you guys. Thank you. So let's start in the 2D pattern window by creating a rectangle at about 50 by 80 millimeters in size. We're then going to want to map a buckle image onto this plane. So to do this, let's go ahead and create a new fabric. I'm going to rename mine Buckle01, and then assign an image to it by selecting the texture button. If you'd like to use the texture files I'm using, I'll have a link to the full asset on my Gumroad in the description below. We can then adjust the mapping of our image by selecting on the Edit Texture 2D option. Now Marvelous Designer has a kind of weird UI for adjusting this, so I found the best way to do it is to use the icon on the pattern itself to move the position of the texture, and then for the scale adjustment use the icon in the top right corner of the viewport. So now that we've got that fitting nicely in our rectangle, let's select the internal polygon option and outline the silhouette of our buckle. Once complete, we can pop up our quick menu using the middle mouse button and select cut to separate our buckle from the rectangle and delete. We can now give our buckle shape a thickness by going into the fabric properties and changing the preset to trim full grain leather and adjusting the thickness to something around 10. We can also adjust the curvature of this extrusion by going into our curved side geometry settings and moving the slider to our liking. In my case, I found 26 gave me the best result. Next, we're going to create two internal lines, one for each slot in our buckle. This will act as the sewing line which will attach our belt or strap to the buckle. Let's then create our first strap by adding in a new rectangle that matches the width of our buckle slots and give it a new material called nylon. We can then change the physical property preset to nylon canvas and adjust the thickness to about one. We can then position this in place and copy in another one that will go on the top side of the buckle. Next I'm going to add in a secondary buckle, which I think is referred to as a ladder lock style buckle or something but I'm not really sure. But yeah, for this we're just going to repeat the same process we did with the first one. So creating a new more square shaped pattern that we'll then assign a new fabric to. I just labelled mine buckle 02 and gave it the same presets and thickness as our first one. Let's then put internal lines on each of the two slots for this one as well, and then I'm just going to copy one more strap to put above this buckle before we start sewing and attaching them. Okay, so now that we've got this all set up, let's go ahead and select the segment sewing tool, and then simply click each of the edges we want to attach on our strap to the corresponding seams on our buckles. Now once we simulate this, we'll see our buckle falls directly to the ground. So to hold this up in place, we can press W and left click to create a temporary tack on our garment, like so. You'll also notice our simulation is looking a bit low quality. So to change this, let's go ahead and change the particle distance on all garments from 20 to 5, and change the additional thickness collision option from 2.5 to something like, say, 0.1. Now you can see we're getting a much cleaner result. So now I'm just going to add in some additional details on the strap elements to make it more closely resemble how they would typically look in real life. So this mostly comprised of just copy and pasting my existing straps and resizing them. I then added in matching internal lines to the body straps so that I could then sew these new elements on top of them. I then added in a few loops for these to thread through before putting in some small tabs at the end of the adjustment straps. The last thing we're going to do which will really help add that extra bit of realism will be the stitching. So to do this we're going to select the segment top stitch tool in the top right hand corner 
and then just drag and select over all the edges you want to have top stitching. We can then customize this by going into the top stitch properties and changing the shape and size to our liking. I ended up using the pick stitch shape which I think just gives it a nice bit of subtle detail. And there we have it guys. Now as you can see we've got a fully dynamic buckle and strap system that when we simulate has the proper physics we would expect from something like this in real life. So we can now copy this project into other files and start getting creative with how we choose to use it. And we can adjust the length and width of the straps in the 2D pattern window to get it to match whatever garment we're working on. And if we were to then take this into Blender, we can easily adjust the material settings in our shader editor window. And because I used a PNG image texture with transparency, I simply plug this into the alpha node on my principled BSDF shader and the buckle becomes transparent in the strap holes like it was in our Marvelous Designer file. Thanks for watching guys and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.